By the way, I'm also a qualified hypnotherapist. <laughs> Good one for you. Hypnosis is a, is a huge tool. It's a beneficial tool in many areas. And I'm going to come on here. Who's been hypnotized here before, by the way? Yeah. So you guys have been hypnotized and know about it. Who's been hypnotized and doesn't know about it yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me explain to you what hypnosis is. Hypnosis is only the induction of trance. If someone goes into a trance state, they are in a hypnotic state at that moment in time. Now a trance, just so we're clear on that, is when your focus of attention is in one area, primarily, at the exclusion of other things going on around you. So if you're totally absorbed by something, if you're totally entrenched in something, if you're highly focused on doing something at that moment in time, you are, by default, in a trance state, therefore you're in a hypnotic state, and you are susceptible to hypnotic suggestion. Someone give me an example of, of a trance you go into normally. Watching telly. Watching telly. TV trance. Sit there. <coughs> Put the monster on, and you believe that stuff. I mean, we even had that, one of our previous prime ministers believed it was true. He was trying to get Deirdre Barr out of prison. Dick. Yeah? <laughs> Cow hypnosis. Give me another trance. Mrs. Moaning at you. Mrs. Moaning at you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My missus or your missus? Yeah. Yeah. But, but you ever had that, where someone walks in and you go, ah, oh, not them again. That's a trance induced response. Give me another trance. <coughs> eh? Driving trance. Absolutely. Driving any week. Do, you know do you know how powerful beliefs are? How easy is it to affect someone's belief? How long does it take to change someone's belief system? Three seconds. Three seconds. Three seconds. Three seconds. Can I borrow a second one? Someone pretty in Someone pretty in great. It takes a long time, doesn't it? He's under. I just set him up prior to doing the lecture. But he's now in hypnosis. About two seconds. I'm going to have a play. My carefully prepared plate pens. Michael, in a second I'm going to ask you to write something down. You also don't have a pen in your hand, but on the floor in front of you is a plate of pens. You believe that those plate of wedges are pens and that they write, and I'm going to ask you to write down everything I've prepared from this moment on this. I believe it's a wicked wicked by the way, good man. Right. Now, this is so important I'm going to tell you now that I'm going to ask Bert if only you write this down so we can give him some notes later on. Steve, we can get his photo copy, can't we? Happy days. Um, just grab a pen, mate, and take some notes with him. Good. Right. Now the principles of reasonable force are such that if, if you're teaching any form of self-defense, any form of occupational skill, be it martial arts, there's a self-defense element to it, but you need to understand the principles of what you're teaching. So if you don't understand the principles of what you're teaching, you can't change someone's belief system. And people are stuck in this fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, In fact, you resign yourself to staying in this chair because the harder you try and get up, the more difficult it becomes because the more sticky the chair will be and make you stuck to it, and therefore you can't get up. Happy days, by the way. Okay, so you've got all that point now, and we don't need to write more, mate. We've got it, we've seen it, so you can just go back to it. We're done now, thanks for that. So the whole principle about this is, is that the aspect of reasonable force is, is a principle, basically. As is a technique, as is anything, as, as is hypnosis. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah! <laughs>